For 60 years, the distinctive thud, thud, thud of the helicopter's rotor blades have echoed across the battlefield, bringing hope to the wounded and filling the enemy with fear and dread. Based on expert opinion, audience polls, and technical comparison, we've constructed a five-point matrix that will rank the top ten helicopters of all time. At number 10, the iconic helicopter from the Korean War, an angel of mercy that went where others fear to tread. Bell 470H13 Su. Manufacturer, Bell Helicopter. Type, General Utility Helicopter. Power plant, one Lycoming VO435A1B six-cylinder engine. Principal armament, two 7.62 millimeter machine guns. Carrying capacity, two medical litters or 1,000 pounds cargo. Maximum cruising speed, 83 miles per hour. The first of many U.S. Army helicopters to be named after Native American tribes, the Bell 47 Sioux was distinctive for its bubble canopy, exposed welded tube tail boom, and saddle fuel tanks. Its two-bladed rotor made a chop-chop sound, leading to the nickname Chopper for helicopters. Basically, you had uh, a crude airframe, uh, an engine, a rotor, and a pilot. Uh, and it was uh, kind of a no-frills helicopter, but it was one of the most popular helicopters ever manufactured. Easily recognizable for its appearances in the smash hit film and television series MASH, the Sioux earned its reputation during the Korean War, a war in which helicopters first cut their teeth. The Sioux becomes as famous as it is, well, first of all, because it's on MASH. But secondly, the Sioux is revolutionary in that it is the first helicopter that the soldier realizes is actually contributing to the battlefield. And it's what really whets the appetite of the American army for more helicopters. The Sioux made its name as a medevac, flying into hot LZs and taking wounded soldiers to MASH units. Of the 23,000 casualties evacuated to these units, over 18,000 were moved by Sioux helicopters. It was called the Angel of Mercy when it was deployed to the Korean War, and I think it was universally loved uh, by the folks on the ground. And for the first time, you could evac a casualty from the battlefield and have them in the surgical unit in a matter of minutes. As grateful as the soldiers were, the medevac process did have its darker side. Its litters were pitch black on the inside. And for soldiers unfortunate enough to wake up in mid-flight, it could be a terrifying experience. A soldier who was wounded quite often was put in there unconscious. And stories have been told by the soldiers when they got back to the aid stations that I woke up, I was in a very, very dark place. I could feel like I was flying, and I thought I'd passed away. The experience for the average Sioux pilot could also be traumatic. Helicopters were continually exposed to enemy small arms fire and anti-aircraft guns. Even worse, the Sioux had minimal ballistic protection, making each medevac an exercise in heroism. A crew member was exposed, basically sitting in a big glass fishbowl in the nose of the aircraft. So it was definitely a dicey situation. Sometimes you sit there and you have to make peace with yourself that this may be the one insertion, the one extraction, the one direct fire support role that I do, it is so ugly, I may not come back out of it, but you still go in. At the end of the war, the Sioux remained pivotal to U.S. operations, flying thousands of sorties in Vietnam. But it would always best be remembered for its service in Korea. The Sioux gets an average score for service length. Innovation is good, but fear factor is low. So this angel of mercy has to make do with the 10th spot in our list.